Our scripture this morning is found in Luke chapter 13, verses 1 through 9. And then God be with us in a special way this morning. Right. There were present at that season some that told him of the Galileans, whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifices. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Suppose ye that these Galileans were sinners above all the Galileans because they suffered such things? I tell you, nay, no, but except you repent, you shall all likewise perish. Or those eighteen upon whom the tower in Siloam fell and slew them, Think ye that they were sinners above all that above all people that dwelt in Jerusalem? I tell you, no, nay, but except you repent, you shall all likewise perish. He spake also this parable. A certain man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard, and he came and saw fruit thereon and found none. Then he said unto the dresser of his vineyard, Behold, these three years I come <coughs> seeking fruit on this fig tree, and find none. Cut it down. Why cumbereth it to the ground? Why let it suck out all the stuff in the ground? And he answered, he said unto them, Lord, let it alone this year, till I dig about it, and put dung around it. And if it bear fruit, well. And if not, then after, thou shalt cut it down. Lord, may you richly bless this reading of your holy word. May it be life-changing, life-altering. Help us to pay attention to what you're saying to us this morning. It is in your name we pray. lifestyle growing up. And maybe I had stayed in a hotel or a motel once or twice before, but when I was 12, we went with that church group. It was down in Ocean City at the, the Harbor House. I don't know if it's still there it's on the Bay Side. And uh, one of the things we noticed was that uh, this was high tech then. And they offered wake-up calls. And it wasn't done by a machine then. It was done by the front desk clerk. You called down to the main desk. You said, I would like a wake-up call at 6 a.m. So we found out that wake-up calls were available. So I don't know who did it, but the people, you know, the friends of ours, you know, we had different rooms. We made sure they got a wake-up call at 6 a.m. And they said, yeah, well, we got a wake-up call at 6 a.m. We don't know where that came from. Uh, I did. Amen. <laughs> This is a wake-up call from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. That's what this is about. And it's a very, very basic style of message, situation, complication, resolution. Situation. Bad things happen in life. It's right in the Bible. And in current events, bad things happen. And Jesus, they're really talking to Jesus. You know, you hear about the, you know, the Galileans, you know, what happened to them. You hear about the people that the power fell on them. So Jesus is talking with them. And, uh, you know, one type was through an evil ruler, Pontius Pilate. He was not a nice man. Pontius Pilate. And we're going to see in you know, a few weeks, he finds Jesus innocent and then condemns him to die and washes his hands of him. So this one group, they went to Jerusalem to sacrifice and they end up getting killed. Then another group of people, so this is like through, through an, evil, an evil person. And then 
another group of people there in uh, the Tower of Siloam fell upon them. Now, in my Life Application Study Bible, the judgment at the time would have been, uh, I wonder, you know, was something wrong with their sacrifice? You know, for Pilate to just take them out like that? You know? Ooh. And then the theory on the Tower of Siloam was they were working on the aqueduct of Rome, which they shouldn't have been doing in the first place. Huh, what do you expect? You're doing something you shouldn't be doing? A tower is going to fall on you. Ain't that terrible? Situation, bad things happen. And a lot of times, what did they do to deserve it? Job's friends, my God, there are chapters and chapters in the Bible of Job's friends trying to figure out, my God, Job, what do you do? What have you done to bring all this trouble down upon you? And of course, Job's friends have not read the first chapter of Job, like we, like us, right? We know that Job hasn't done anything wrong in regard to the things that happened to him. God be with us in a special way. Bad things happen, the complication is, whose fault is it? We want to know. John 9, 2. John chapter 9, verse 2. This blind guy, who sinned? Jesus, was it him? Or was it his parents that made this kid blind? Jesus says, not him or his parents. This is the story of God's glory. Oh, my God. Sometimes we may think, certainly it was back in the Lord's time, I think it's today too, bad things only happen to really bad people. But then Jesus cuts right to the chase. Do you think that you're better than these people? Do you think that you're better than these Galileans? Do you think that you're better than these people who died when this tower fell upon them? You think they're worse than you? We miss it in the translation. Jesus gives two very emphatic no's. No! He yells at them. No! You're not better than them. No, they're not worse than you. And he changes the question from why did this happen to them? I wonder what they did. To what does this mean to me? Jesus wants us to ask instead. Instead of, huh, why did that happen to them? They were, you know, mm. To what does this mean to me? He wants us to take out a mirror. And Jesus is making a point. Help me, Lord. Help me to communicate this. Jesus is making a point. They were caught by surprise. They were caught by surprise. They were, they were caught suddenly and they were unprepared. I don't want that to happen. I don't want that to happen to you. Again, losing the translation. You've got to pay attention here. Unless you repent, you will all perish as they did. 13.3 is continuing repentance. Kind of like when I say, how does a pilot stay on course? Constant correction. That's how a pilot who flies stays on course. Constant correction. But then in 13.5, it's once and for all. So there's two kinds of repentance. There's a daily repentance, a paying attention to God that we need. And there's that once and for all repentance. Like that dear lady, I worked with the guys of front desk clerk for a while. The guy's name is Ray. His mother, a Southern Baptist, was in the nursing home. Every time I saw Mrs. Saunders, she would say, people must make a decision. You make a decision for Jesus Christ that he's your Lord and Savior. And you don't want to miss out on that decision. 
It's a once and for all decision. Is Christ your Lord and Savior? I pray he is. Well, you do. You ask him in your heart. But then, after you make that decision, it's a daily decision. God, what would you have me to do? Bad things happen. Situation, bad things happen. Complications. Sometimes you want to know whose fault it is. But here's the resolution. This is what matters. Do you think that there were worse offenders than all the others living in Jerusalem? No, I tell you, but unless you repent, you will all perish just as they did. Jesus is saying, let this be a wake-up call. Let any disaster, any difficulty be a wake-up call to pay attention to God. Definition of repentance, a change of mind that results in a change of action. Repent just means turning to God. Help me, Jesus. What would you have me do? This is an absolutely true story. When I was in fifth grade, a boy in my class, yeah, I grew up in East Brunswick. It was the end of the earth back then. You know, there's potato farms in shore beyond East Brunswick. Half the men, all men back then, took the bus at the end of the road to New York City, 55 minutes out. A guy in my fifth grade class, his name was Ron. His dad took the bus into New York City. He was walking to work, and a piece of construction <coughs> fell off a scaffold, took him out, and killed him immediately. I still remember that day in school, they came, they took Ron out of class and said that his dad had tragically died in a terrible accident. I still remember that. I still remember that day. Our Lord is telling us life, the Galileans while sacrificing Tyler kills them. The people who had power fell on. Who knew? Jesus is telling us life is fragile. Amen? Life's fragility demands urgency. Amen? Life's fragility demands urgency in paying attention. Turn to God and pay attention to what matters. What matters? We just studied it Wednesday night. In the prayer the Lord taught us, may your kingdom come, may your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. I like to add here, you know what I pray. God is telling us, Jesus is instructing us to pray. He's also instructing us to help make it happen. That we'll be agents of God's kingdom coming, God's will be done on earth, God's will being done on earth as it is in heaven. And again, I learned this my first week in seminary. God's kingdom is already, it's already here. It's also not yet. There's good things that are still meant to be happened. And that's why we pray. May your kingdom come, may your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We're to pray and we're to work for that to happen. Help us, Lord. We're learning more about this in the prayer that Jesus taught. Then in Luke 13, 6 through 9, parable of the fig tree. Now, I can tell you a little story. I can't do it now. But ask me about it sometime, and I'll, I'll, I'll tell anybody this story. That this happened in my life in my ministry here, this fig tree story. Jesus is saying to us, 13, 6 through 9, God looks for fruit. This guy comes with a fig tree and wants fruit. That's what fig trees are for. My grandfather had one out in his little place of paradise, one of the DuPont company houses in Carney's Point, New Jersey. He wrapped that fig tree up every winter time, all bundled up, made delicious figs. Fig trees are to produce fruit. God looks for fruit. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. 
Second point, God is patient. Third point, God gives special care. All right, dig around in it, fertilize it, we'll give it another year. But there will be a time when it is too late. And I think that's my best definition of hell. Too late! Help us, Lord. I also remember one time when Vincent Peale was on the Phil Donahue show. Man, they were roasting him. Tell us, Reverend Peel, where do you think hell is? Reverend Norman Vincent Peel just quietly said, pointed to his brain. God wants to change our minds, and God wants to change our actions. That happens when we pay attention to the Lord. And let the Holy Spirit work in our lives. When I go to Walmart across the street, I usually go very late. This past Friday night, I just felt moved to go a little lower. I went at 9 o'clock, and there at the door was a lady with a sign. I'm hungry, beautiful sign, I'm hungry, I need help. And I, I, I've seen these people with the signs. And I, I've tried to help them a couple times, and they, they just kind of really, it's been like hit and run. So I, I went into the store. I said, I'm going to shop. She hardly spoke English. She said she was from Romania. I came back out, and Vandella had just gotten us the, the Wawa Walmart cards. And I, on the way out, you know, I talked with her for a while. She said she had a seven-month-old child and her husband. First told me she was staying in a hotel. And then she, you know, she said her, her husband was in the car with a seven-month-old baby. I just felt so unsettled. I went in my car and then for about 15, 20 minutes, I just watched. So she couldn't see me. And you know, I just saw maybe one or two people how people just passed her by. And, but I was more, sus I was as much suspicious as I was wanting to help. So I, then I saw her leave. And I saw her go to a car. And I circled, and then I pulled up. And there in the car was a guy named Marios. She was Christina. And this little seven month old baby, Angelina. And they had Texas license plates. And again, you know, this is, you know, we're talking in broken English. And I always learn if somebody doesn't understand your language, just speak louder. <laughs> <laughs> Which I didn't do, by the grace of God. We had a wonderful conversation. They were from Texas, you know. They told me they didn't have proper ID, and you know, let me put you up in a hotel. You know, no, no, we, we could stay with friend. Uh, this much gas. Only have this much gas. So I said, okay, we'll go to Wawa. And they only had this much gas. They took 19, almost 19 gallons at Wawa. And Lord have mercy. And then I said, follow me. And we, we I said, church. My, my church. And then, you know, you believe in Orthodox. We Orthodox. And then when I gave him some more help with some more cards, he, he kept on crossing himself. And, I mean, their needs, their needs were real. He said, we, we, it did not work out out here. We went to consulate. No, no, no good. We, we, we go back to Texas. I said, well, if you need, come back here tomorrow and show them where the church was. Help us, Jesus. You know, these situations like this happen all the time. We need to pay attention and open our eyes. It, it, at first, I wanted to prove that it was a scam. And it was proved to me that there was real help in it. Amen? Amen. And you helped them. I had the church credit card for the gas. 
and Vandela had gone and gotten cards that day. And they were just the, you know, uh, you know what this is? Gift card. They knew what gift card was. And they knew it could buy them gas or food. And at seven months old, Angelina, we had prayer together. I said, I asked a blessing over the baby. She smiled, cute. What does repentance look like in your life? What does God's wake-up call mean to you, mean for you today? This is from one of those old chicken soup books. If there were five minutes left to your life, who would you call? What would you say? Why are you waiting? Amen? Jesus said, hey, these people weren't any worse than you. You're not any better than them. Pay attention and repent, for the kingdom of God is very near. Let's pray. Lord, we love you and we need you. Lord Jesus Christ, I say to me for everyone here, Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy upon me as sin. Lord, I, I, I lift up my hand to you. And Lord, I ask anybody else watching at home on the computer, if anybody else just wants a special touch from you to walk closer with you, may they lift a hand as well. God, may you be the God when we, that we sing and he walks with me and he talks with me. May you be the God who we pray to. I'll instruct and teach you the way you should go. I'll counsel you with my eye upon you. We thank you that there's still time, God. It's in your name we pray. And thank you for these very kind words to us today, Jesus. It's in your name we pray. All God's people say, Amen. Amen.